Hello Revolution students and welcome back to another video on the Russian Revolution area of study one. In this video we're going to look at the 1905 revolution and the role played by the peasants in that revolution. There were another two key groups that contributed to the revolution. They were the workers and the liberals but we will look at their role in future videos. So anyway, let's get back to the peasants. So the peasants prior to the 1905 revolution faced a number of problems in the countryside. They'd experienced poor harvest between 1897 and 1901, which had brought famine. Witt's economic reforms, which had done so much for Russia's industry, built factories, increased jobs for workers, had brought no benefit to the peasant farmers themselves, so they were left behind. And the other key problem that the peasants had faced and continue to face post-1905 was that there was not enough fertile land for them. And as a consequence, uh, land prices were too high, even though the peasants could buy their land, as a result of them being freed under the Emancipation Decree of 1861, uh, land was still too costly to buy and those peasants who had bought land had huge mortgages over their heads uh, which many of them feared they could not pay off and as a consequence they feared that they would get their land stripped from them. And the other key point was poverty so as I just referred to these peasants were overburdened by high mortgage repayments and feared that they would get their land taken off them. All right, so what did they do in the 1905 revolution? Well, their revolt started in January, February 1905, and it broke out in the Kursk province and then spread to the Volga region and then most of the Black Earth provinces. And the Black Earth provinces, uh, the Black Earth region is that strip of land in southern Russia which runs through Ukraine into further east, which is very, very fertile land, um, produces a lot of wheat and grain. So very valuable land. The peasants rose up and they seized and attacked uh, the manor houses of the landlords. And you can see that stat there from Orlando Fiege. So nearly 3,000 manors were destroyed in the revolution during the revolution, which was 15% of the total. And they did this because they feared that the government was about to repossess their land because they'd failed to pay off their mortgages. So getting back to those earlier points we said about um, the role of these high mortgages in creating discontent amongst the peasants. Okay, so that's our summary of uh, what the peasants did during the 1905 revolution. Let's just have a look at a historical interpretation now. And this historical interpretation is from Orlando Fiege and it's a very interesting one. Let me read through it. So the struggle for the land was not the only form of peasant revolution in 1905-06. Alongside the violence on the land, there grew up a whole range of peasant unions, agricultural societies and cooperatives. They espoused the ideals of political reform, of a constitution and a parliament, and of better education for the peasants in addition to land reform. So gaining access to more land. But the really interesting part there is that these peasant cooperatives, might almost call them Soviets, uh, these peasant cooperatives, uh, they also demanded or wanted a parliament, so a, a legislative assembly, a constitutional assembly, a legislative duma, a similar demand uh, to the one that was made in Father Gapon's petition, which we'll look at in the next video and a uh, similar demand that was made by the unions of unions, by the union of unions. And we'll look at that as well. So all these various revolutionary groups uh, were demanding, often demanding similar things. And uh, the demand for a legislative assembly, a parliament, ran through all of them. Anyway, so that's our summary of how the peasants contributed to the 1905 revolution. I hope you have found it useful for your study of the Russian Revolution, area study one, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.